welcome to story time. Today we're going to read about an animal that slithers on the ground and smells with its tongue. If you guess snakes, you're correct. But first, let's sing our open shut them song. Let's put your hands like this. Ready? Open shut them, open shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open shut them, open shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them to your little mouth, but do not let them in. Okay. Our first book is called Snakes on a Train by Katherine Dennis. Look at these silly snakes. These two are, look like they're uh, sharing an ice cream cone. This one's reading a book. These two are just looking at each other. And there's the train engineer or the driver. Okay. And this book is published by Firewell and Friends. The conductor takes the tickets. They say one ride. And there's the conductor, the yellow snake in the hat as the snakes all slither on. All aboard the train, full of snakes. <laughs> the tracks are checked. Can you see what I see? That looks like a snake to me. The whistle blows. It's time to move along. Hiss, goes the sound of the train. The train leaves the station as the gears begin to grind. The switcher pulls the handle and the cars slide down the line. Hiss goes the sound of the train. Oh, and look at these two snakes, they're playing a card game. These two look like they're drinking something. Maybe soda or water? I don't know. The brake snake stops the train. Uh-oh, pulls the emergency brake. There's trouble in the back. Look, the pig fell off the train. Who knew a pig was on the train with all these snakes? The flagger waves the signal flag and the train stays on the track. It's like a figure eight, such a long train. And there's the pig back on the train right here. Hiss goes the sound of the train. Now the train is in a tunnel. It's dark as night inside. Ooh, it's a little spooky. Hiss goes the sound of the train. And all you can see are the snake eyes. The train races down the hill as the snakes pretend to fly. That's a steep hill. Ooh. A view from high, a fish swim by going over the bridge. Hiss goes the sound of the train. The day is coming to an end. It's time for snakes to find their den. Some of them already have these little holes in the ground. They're going to reach their destination. As snakes slither off to sleep past the setting sun, the train rests for the night. And now the moon's out. Crescent moon. Snakes wrap themselves in little balls and tuck their tails in tight. Perfectly round circles. 
The snake is winking at us. Let's see. Goes the sound of the train. Good night. Okay, next we're gonna do a song called S N A K E, and it's to the sound <laughs> to the tune of B I N G O. Bingo was his name. Oh. Um, here's how it goes. I had a snake. He was so fast, as fast as snakes can be. S N A K E S N A K E S N A K E. He is my favorite snake. I had a snake. He was so green, as green as snakes can be. S N A K E S N A K E S N A K E. He is my favorite snake. I had a snake. He waved goodbye. He waved goodbye to me. S N A K E S. N A K E S N A K E. He is my favorite snake. <laughs> All right. Next, we have this book it's called Duckworth the Difficult Child, written by Michael Sussman, illustrated by Julia Sarda. And it's published by Athenium Books for Young Readers. Duckworth was building a castle out of toothpicks. Wow, that's impressive. When he heard a hissing sound coming from the closet, he looked up and saw a gigantic snake slithering out of his closet. Uh-oh. Duckworth dashed downstairs where he found his parents sitting together on the sofa. They were reading a book called Dealing With Your Difficult Child. A huge snake came out of my closet, said Duckworth. I think it's a cobra. According to this book, said Mother, you are too old to be imagining monsters under the bed, Duckworth, or snakes hiding in your closet for that matter. Parents don't believe him. But it's a real snake, Duckworth insisted. It hissed at me. It's all in your head, said father. It says here, you will forget such nonsense if we give you chores to do. Please wash the dishes, Duckworth, and when you're done with that, take out the garbage and mow the lawn. Poor Duckworth. By the time Duckworth finished his chores, he was so tired that he had, in fact, forgotten all about the snake. But it's still there. But after taking a nap, Duckworth was practicing his recorder when the cobra slithered right up and opened its huge mouth, swallowed him whole. That is an enormous snake. The snake slid downstairs and into the game room where Duckworth's parents were playing checkers. Where did you find that snake costume? asked father. It's not a costume, said Duckworth from inside the cobra. The snake from my closet swallowed me. It's crazy ideas like these that make you such a difficult child, said mother. The book says your fantasies will go away if we ignore them. Hmm. Poor Duckworth, there he is stuck in the snake. So, while father prepared dinner, mother continued playing checkers. Somehow, the snake managed to win. What a smart snake. Father called everyone to the table. 
the snake slithered up onto Duckworth's chair. The book says we're supposed to include Duckworth in mealtime conversations, said Mother. Excellent, said Father. How was your day, Duckworth? Terrible, said Duckworth. I'm stuck inside a snake. Please use your knife and fork, Duckworth, said Mother. You're too old to be eating like an animal. He has to use his tongue because it's inside the snake. He can't even eat it. The snake's eating. After dinner, Duckworth's parents went out for a stroll. The snake followed them. They met Mr. and Mrs. Snodgrass and stopped to chat. I see Duckworth's wearing a snake costume, said Mrs. Snodgrass, Mr. Snodgrass. It's not a costume, cried Duckworth. A snake swallowed me. Oh my, Mrs. Snodgrass said with a chuckle. What a vivid imagination. Yes, Mother agreed. That's what makes him such a difficult child. Luckily, we bought a book on how to handle difficult children like Duckworth, said Father. It says to keep him busy with playmates. So tonight we've invited his cousin Digby for a sleepover. Oh no, cried Duckworth. The snake will swallow Digby too. Don't be ridiculous, Mother laughed. Digby is afraid of the dark. He'd never get inside your silly costume. Digby won't have any choice, thought Duckworth. He had to free himself at once. Fortunately, by the time they got home, Duckworth had thought of a plan. He had once seen a snake charmer in a movie. The man had controlled a cobra by playing his flute. Duckworth felt around in the dark and found his recorder. Then he played the same tune the snake charmer had played. Hmm, I wonder what the snake will do now. But look at all the things the snake has eaten. He's, there's some fish, he ate, he ate mushrooms, he had the toothpicks from Duckworth's tassel, he's eaten those. He's eaten frogs, piece of kale, uh, a bone, a pencil sharpener, oh, all kinds of things. Sure enough, the snake opened his mouth wide and Duckworth crawled out. It worked. Hmm. It's about time you took off that silly costume, said father. Now please put it back in your closet until Halloween, said Mother. Duckworth let the snake out the back door. As he watched it slither away into the bushes, he wondered where he could find a book for dealing with difficult parents. and he boarded up his closet doors. The snake won't be coming back anytime soon. The end. Okay, let's sing our goodbye song. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. See you next time. Bye.